Hey everyone, this is Ben Thompson here. I'm making this video for day three of the tinnitus retraining therapy course with doctors Powell and Margaret Jastroboff. This is the training course. We're meeting on Zoom video and I'm gonna run through some of my major takeaways from the end of now, day three. Uh, I'm gonna start with talking about natural habituation versus induced habituation. Um, natural habituation is when we, without any external input, without any sort of guidance, are naturally getting used to certain stimuli. We're aware of the stimulus, but we're not paying attention to it. We're not reacting to it. It's not entering our conscious experience. Induced habituation is a similar end result, but uh, typically faster and easier and with more guidance. In this retraining therapy is induced habituation, so it's important to get those terms straight. Uh, personally, I'm finding a lot of value and benefit from this course, and I know that I'm going to be able to serve many people through the Pure Tinnitus community, one-on-one -on -one sessions, YouTube videos, and potentially an online course that I'm creating for tinnitus retraining therapy. Um, second, I wanted to touch on this idea of golden silence. Some other Tinnitus professionals will uh, explain how silence is the goal. Or you might see this online of certain herbal supplements uh, suggesting that they can create silence in your auditory experience. Tinnitus retraining therapy does not, uh, Paolo Jastroboff and his wife, Margaret Jastroboff, they do not encourage the expectation of finding or having golden silence as part of treatment. Um, it's, I wanted to bring this up because the most evidence-based, factual, scientific treatment would never recommend or create expectations that you're going to get to silence most of the times or all of the time, uh, and for a few reasons. Number one, it doesn't create uh, the right kind of mindset going into the longitudinal, the long-term uh, recovery with tinnitus. Um, number two, not everyone experiences silence, and even those who do, typically it's for a short duration of time, a few hours, a few days, a few weeks. It's very rare to suddenly never hear tinnitus again. So I wanted to bring that up because if you see other professionals or people marketing services or products for tinnitus and they're talking about silence, you have to question how sincere are they and how well do they really know the research to be able to create that expectation, you know? Uh, next thing I wanna bring up, a uh, reflection of today's uh, coursework, is the idea of a normal hearing test. Most often, a hearing test comprises of an audiogram, which is when you go into the sound booth at a hearing clinic and they test the different beeps and you respond, yes, I heard that, that creates your thresholds for each different pitch from bass to treble. Um, a lot of people with tinnitus can have a hearing test that shows normal, meaning your hearing is in the normal range. And that can be a big, that can be a barrier, a mental barrier. It can keep you stuck. If you have hearing in the normal range, but you have tinnitus, then some other part of the system must be wrong. So you go down this rabbit hole of trying to find it. You try random weird things and you end up basically in the place that you started, if not worse. Um, big part of tinnitus retraining therapy is proper education on the hearing system. Specifically for the hearing test, there's a specialty type of test that most clinics have this tool. Most audiology clinics have this tool to test. It's called otoacoustic emissions. Oto is referring to ear, acoustic is referring to sound, and emissions meaning it's leaving the system so we can measure it. Uh, there's a result of certain kinds of sounds that are actually sent outward towards the ear from the brain, and they are called OAEs, autoacoustic emissions. We can measure them, and from that information, we get the health of the outer hair cells inside of the cochlea of the hearing organ. I myself have a hearing test in the normal range, but my OAEs, autoacoustic emissions, are absent from 4,000 to 8,000 hertz. So I myself am one of these cases where I have tinnitus, I have milder tinnitus, by the way. I have tinnitus, my hearing test is in the normal range. 
and I have absent or reduced OAEs in the cochlea outer hair cell function. So the important part here is that um, people can really get stuck on the fact of, I was told my hearing is perfect or I was told my hearing is normal, but I still have tinnitus, so there must be something else wrong. Well, hold on, let's take this one step back. Did they test for OAEs? What is the status of your outer hair cell function? Most, the that we were going over the research that 99% of people with tinnitus have damaged outer hair cell function. So if that has been a mental uh, challenge for you to get past of well, what, is the, what is the break in the system, it probably is related to your ear to some degree. So try not to overthink that and maybe get an OAE test to get more information. Yeah, so day three, we really focused on counseling and education, which I'm learning more and more is the, one of the biggest parts of getting better with tinnitus, having the right guidance and having the right kind of one-on-one -on -one attention as well as just education in general. Um, my YouTube channel so far has pretty much scratched the surface of high quality tinnitus education. I've definitely you know, provided materials for free in terms of education, but what I'm learning in this course goes way deeper and present it in, a, in a, a more comprehensive way with even more science to back it up. So I'm happy to learn this and happy to create materials to help others with tinnitus. Um, the tinnitus response, the reaction to tinnitus, it would be considered a subconscious conditioned reflex. What that means is that you're not in control of your tinnitus if you're having a negative reaction to it, a negative response. Uh, and this can feel pretty overwhelming, I'm sure. Um, but also most people don't even recognize that this system is happening inside of their brain and body without them being aware of it. That's going to be a big part of learning how to get better is understanding that. Those are my reflections from day three. I'm making a reflection video like this after all five days of the five-day course. And this is really a masterclass for thinness, hyperacusis, and misophonia. So thanks for watching this and please leave a like and leave a comment, and I really appreciate your time. I sincerely wish you good health forward. Thank you.